body weight increases until midlife. And that's what we'll see here with body weight on the y-axis plotted against age on the x. And this is a study in mice that included five different groups of mice. Ad lib, so one group was allowed to eat as much as they wanted, whenever they wanted. A group that had one day of fasting, 1D, two days of fasting, 2D, 20% CR, and 40% CR. So starting at six months of age, which is when the intervention started, we can see that body weight increased for the ad lib group, for one day of fasting, for two days of fasting, 20% CR, and then somewhat bucking the trend was the 40% CR group, at least initially, as it took about six months for 40% CR mice to reach their lowest body weight. But then there too, we can see that even 40% CR had an increase in body weight up to midlife, which is around 20 months in mice, as their maximal lifespan is 40 months. So 20 divided by 40 is approximately midlife in mice. But then after midlife, we can see that body weight declines for each of these groups. For ad lib, one day of fasting, two days of fasting, 20% CR, and even 40% CR experienced this age-related or after midlife-related decline for body weight. So what may be driving the body weight decline in after midlife? So the major cause of death in mice is cancer, which then raises the question, is cancer cachexia, which is in part defined as muscle and fat wasting that accompanies a cancer diagnosis, is that driving the post midlife loss of body weight? So before diving deep into addressing that question, note that this phenotype of body weight increasing and then decreasing after midlife also happens in people. And to illustrate that point, we'll take a look at how BMI changes during aging. So on the y-axis, we've got BMI, and note that BMI is body weight in kilograms divided by height squared. So on the y-axis, BMI plotted against age. Data for women on the left and men on the right. And the different colors are different ethnicities, so white, black, Hispanic, and other. Regardless of ethnicity, we can see that BMI increases in both women and men until approximately midlife, and then it declines. So we can see that this story is similar in terms of the body weight loss increasing and then decreasing before midlife and after midlife. So what's going on here? Why the inverse U-shape during aging for body weight? So and now I'm gonna put on my speculation hat. So aging in the first half of life. So what's going on there? Why would there be an increase in body weight? Mm -hmm. Now, most of that is not uh, muscle mass, skeletal muscle mass. Most of that is body fat. So why would body fat increase during the first half of life? Well, immune system decline may be a part of that story as body fat, uh, specifically adipocytes, can produce antimicrobial peptides like cathelicidin, which, again, speculation hat, may be helping uh, the immune system, a declining immune system, fight off microbial burden. So that would be my hypothesis. There may be other stuff going on, but in the first half of life, that's what I would speculate to happen. So what about in the second half of life? Well, we're considering that the major cause of death in mice is cancer, and they experience that uh, in post-midlife the loss of body weight, which is likely driven by cancer cachexia over the 20 months that they have in their remaining lifespan, couldn't it be possible that this, this is also happening in people? So in support of that, cancer incidence increases during aging. And that's what we'll see here with the cancer incident rate on the y-axis plotted against age at diagnosis on the x. Now, in people younger than 19 years, we can see that cancer incident rates are very low, which then increase afterwards throughout aging, such that the cancer incident rate for a 70-year-old relative to a 20-year-old is 100 times higher. So how might cancer impact weight loss in the second half of life? So tumors secrete pro-inflammatory cytokines, which is what we'll see here. So starting from the tumor, some of those pro-inflammatory cytokines include TNF-alpha, IL-6, and C-reactive protein. And if you're familiar with the channel, you know that I include CRP for every test. I included TNF-alpha and IL-6 for the first blood test in 2025, and they were either below the limit of detection or very low towards the limit of detection, so all good news there for now. So these and other pro-inflammatory cytokines can impact um, or impart multi-organ dysfunction and atrophy. For example, starting with the brain, they can in induce anorexia or the decreased drive to eat. Now, the decreased drive to eat would be a major factor in that uh, loss of weight, body weight, in the second half of life. And also these pro-inflammatory cytokines can it directly induce fat wasting, so loss of fat mass, loss of skeletal muscle mass, but also uh, cardiac atrophy, so a 
uh, shrink or loss of muscle mass in the heart. And in terms of organ dysfunction, they can negatively impact pancreatic and gut function. Now, collectively, this is known as the cancer cachexic phenotype. So with this in mind, can cancer cachexia be caught early? And with that in mind, it's important to note that cancer cachexia progresses in stages, which is what we'll see here. And note that each of these three stages are characterized by anorexia, again, the decreased drive to eat. So I won't highlight them as we go through the stages. So for the pre-cachexia stage, that's characterized by weight loss less than 10%. So note that this isn't, you know, you go on a diet or you uh, eat fewer calories and you lose weight. This is unintended, unexplained weight loss of less than 10% of the total body weight after a cancer diagnosis would be considered the pre-cachexia stage. Cachexia would then be defined as weight loss greater than 10% of the total body weight. So for someone who weighs 150 pounds, if they lost more than 15 pounds relatively quickly, that would be in the cachexia uh, cancer stage. But then the worst stage is refractory uh, cachexia, which is characterized by severe wasting and ultimately is the step closest to death. So to address this question of can cancer cachexia be caught early, are there biomarkers that are related to cachexia stage scoring? And there are, which is what we'll see here. These are biomarkers correlated with cachexia stage scoring system. And this is in stage four cancer patients. Now, the first two, the, strong, the strongest correlations for biomarkers on this list are two biomarkers that shouldn't be a surprise for those of you who are familiar with the channel, albumin and HB, which is hemoglobin. So these uh, levels of these biomarkers are relatively high in youth, and then they decline during aging. Now, specific to cancer cachexia, relatively higher levels of albumin and hemoglobin will be more likely to be found in the pre-cachexia stage and more likely to be lower in refractory cachexia and ultimately closest to death. So keeping levels of these uh, biomarkers relatively high may not just be important for aging, but for potentially slowing cancer cach uh, cachexia. Also note that having relatively high lymphocytes, which also relatively high levels are found in youth and they decline during aging, relatively high levels of lymphocytes would also be more likely to be found in the pre-cachexia stage and more likely to be lower in the refractory cachexia stage and ultimately closest to death. So keeping levels of albumin, lymphocytes, and hemoglobin relatively high and resisting age-related changes may be important for delaying, and I say maybe because these are, these are just correlations. We don't know about causation. Now also note the pro-inflammatory cytokines, positive correlations, TNF, TNF alpha, IL-6, IL-8, and C-reactive protein. So those positive correlations suggest that relatively higher levels of these pro-inflammatory cytokines would be found in the refractory cachexia stage relative to the pre-cachexia stage where they would be more likely to be lower. Also, immune cells are part of the biomarker story here with the neutrophil and platelet to lymphocyte ratio, so NLR and PLR. So having, having higher ratios of both of these would be more likely to be found in the refractory cachexia stage relative to the earlier cachexia stages. And last but not least is the SII, which is the Systemic Immune Inflammatory Index, which is just simply defined as the product of two of these biomarkers, platelets uh, or to, platelets times the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio. So a higher SII would be more likely to be found in refractory cachexia, again, closest to death relative to the earlier cachexia stages. So when considering these correlations, if we track these biomarkers, can we delay progression of cancer cachexia? Now note that, again, as I mentioned, these biomarkers change during aging. So if we keep them relatively youthful and avoid age-related changes, my bet would be that we might be able to delay cancer incidence from happening, if at all. If you've ever wondered what's optimal for biomarkers, well, I've set up a new Patreon tier just for that. This includes Patreon-specific videos dedicated to how each of the 29 biomarkers on this list change during aging and their associations with all-cause mortality risk. Rather than focusing on the reference range, it focuses on potential optimal ranges that are derived from 45 published papers. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, I post at least twice a day in five different Patreon tiers. So if you're interested in that, check it out. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount and affiliate links that you can use to test yourself, which helps support the channel, including ultalabtest.com, which is where I get the majority of my blood tests, the clearly filtered water filter, which I use every day, at-home metabolomics, oral microbiome composition, 
NAD testing with Genfinity, epigenetic testing, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes the DNA methylation test Grimage, which I'll cover in an upcoming video, green tea, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. Mm -hmm. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.